When you approached the notes, I know you had not seen Otis when you were younger. How did you sort of frame them in your mind that you were going to try to write them? I really wanted to do two things. One, I wanted to find somebody who had been in the room. As an audience member, perhaps, a musician, perhaps, I wanted to get a sense of what the energy was like. But at the same time, I also wanted to talk about what LA was like then in that period and why this would have been like such a monumental feat for Otis to be able to play in a room like the Whiskey A Go Go. And in 1966, Things were changing here in Los Angeles, and Los Angeles' star was rising. It was becoming a music center itself. I wanted to be able to kind of write about those two, those two stories, because Otis's star was clearly rising, and I wanted to get the sense in the notes that this was all very deliberate. He was ready to go that next rung, but he wanted to go from star to superstar, and L.A. would have helped him do that. That's how he wanted to frame the notes. You know, I talked to his manager, Phil Walden, once. Phil Walden was with Otis from the start, and he said it was a very conscious decision to come play the whiskey. Mm -hmm. That was the dream of all mm -hmm. uh, African-American artists then, was to go from the R&B charts mm -hmm. to the pop charts, because mm -hmm. the pop charts then had everything on it. I mean, they had rock, soul, everything. The country songs would make it. Wow. You know, people often say that, well, you know, Monterey Pop really took Otis to the other mm -hmm. side, but Walden was going for it before then. Mm -hmm. so what did the audience feel like when they were watching Otis? I mean, you could hear them on the tape, right. but you did some research. And right. They were so wowed, and the audience did not know what was happening to them, but they knew it was an event, and they knew that they were lucky to be in that room with him. I've always had a theory that rhythm and blues, soul music, was a catalyst for integration in America. Because before soul music really got to be popular, the races, the blacks and the whites, were very separated. Right. But when the show started happening, and the blacks and whites started congregating together, mm -hmm. I think they saw their real similarities just as human beings. Mm -hmm. And I think o people like Otis Redding, I don't know if he had a sense of that, something tells me he did, mm -hmm. but that's what was happening, and this for sure happened mm -hmm. at the Whiskey. Right. Because probably a lot of these, this audience had never seen a soul artist. Right. It could have been their first. Live, exactly. They weren't playing the whiskey. That's right. Was one, yeah. He was one of the first. That's right. Do you sense that, that uh, the music helped bring the races together? Absolutely. I mean, he was singing about basic, raw human emotions, longing, love, promise. And he did it in such a conversational way. Often the lyrics are simple because what he could do is just bore into each adjective, each verb. It opened something that was familiar inside yourself, and I think it created a bridge.